Now you're just about to watch a video where I install a domain controller into a virtual box solution. Before you watch this video is that I'm not going to go through and talk about what a domain controller is. I'm not going to go through and talk about all of the intricacies of Active Directory. But what you are going to see is quite literally just the installation of these things into VirtualBox and how how straightforward it really is. You're going to see it go fairly fast. Like the video is not that long, but what I've done is I've actually edited out all of the waiting. All right. So that's probably the longest part about this whole setup is that it is involved quite a bit of waiting while you're installing stuff. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. For this home lab, we're going to be actually building ourselves a domain controller that's going to be running Active Directory on it. And it's going to be a Windows server. And then eventually, we're going to be adding a machine to that domain. All right. So first things first, we actually need to create our server here inside of VirtualBox. Okay, that's the one that I like to use. If you have a different solution that you like to run virtual machines out of, feel free to go ahead and do that there. What we do need though, before we get cracking on this, is we need an ISO file. It's basically just a virtualized disk. Imagine that you're inserting a, an actual CD into the tray of your computer, closing the tray and turn the computer on, and now we're going to be actually running whatever uh, data is actually on that disk. So we need to actually acquire from Microsoft a trial version of a Windows server. So right now I've got a, on the screen you see a Windows 10 Enterprise. I've actually gone ahead and already downloaded this. So you're going to need this one as well for our, our series here. And we're actually going to go over to Windows and get the, whichever one you want. I mean, really, it's it's not that much different. It's got some additional security potentially, but for for us, like honestly, if you want to pick whichever one, whatever suits your need for your particular home lab that you are brewing up, go ahead and and download it. Once you've got your ISO file downloaded, we need to actually go and make a new machine. Machine new. And I'm going to give this a Windows Server. We are going to, oh, we can choose an ISO image. Go ahead and click on this button right here and navigate to wherever that ISO file, that Windows Server file that you just downloaded. Great. I've got my ISO selected. Let's go ahead and follow along with the process here. Next. We don't want that. So it's saying the default is two gigs. That's that's actually pretty low for a Windows server. So let's let's bump it up to something around eight. Eight gigs would be totally totally doable. Still, even then, kind of on the low the low side of things. And processors would be great to have two processors, three if you've got if you have more to spare. Like go for it. Go ahead and do that. I am going to be happy with the the memory that I've got here and the the processors that I've got. Actually I'm gonna bump it down to two. Fifty gigs. This is dynamic, so the operating system when you install it's gonna to look to see how big is this 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 hard drive here. You could bump this up a bit and it doesn't really matter because it's set as dynamic and you're not allocating space right away. That looks good. We we like it. Now before we do much more, we need to check out our network settings. So let's go over here and then click on settings. And our network it's by default is set to NAT. That's okay because we do actually want this machine to query the internet because there could be some things that the Windows server didn't have in the ISO file and it has to pull that down into this particular uh, installation. So I'm happy with that. We're going to hit OK and then we are going to power this machine on. All right, the machine is powered on. Let's go ahead and continue with our setup here. I'm going to choose next. I'm OK with that. 
and install now. Now and here we get to choose the versions that we want. It's really up to you. In this particular case, I'm actually going to choose the desktop experience. That's fine. And this has the graphical environment. So it's 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 nice. It it works nice and it looks good. Let's continue on. And of course, everybody's read read that and then head next. And we're going to do custom install. Now, depending on what you want your lab environment to look like, you may want to do some work in here. For me, in this particular lab environment that I'm making, I'm okay using the entire thing. And now you just got to sit and wait a little bit because it's going to go through and it's going to look at that ISO file and it's going to install all the things that it needs to install here. So at this point, you've got a very important step to do. You need to set your administrator password. Now, depending on whatever your lab environment is, you may, may you may want to make this really secure or not super secure. It, it really depends on what you want in your home lab. Uh, so go ahead and create your password. Make sure it's something that you remember. Awesome. Okay. Let's send a control alt delete to this. Now we're going to log in as the administrator. It's creating the profile for us, which is great. We have installed our Windows 2022 server. We haven't done any configurations on it yet. And right now we can see the server manager is loading. And this is at the point that actually we would do some, some configurations, like create a domain controller, etc., etc., etc. But before we do any of that, save yourself hours of labor and go and take a snapshot. I always like the very first one to be a clean install. Awesome. Now with server manager open, what we're going to do is actually we're going to go ahead and add Active Directory domain services to this server. So let's go ahead and fly on over to manage and we're going to select add roles and features. Before we begin, yep, we are good. We're going to hit next here and I'm going to choose a role based or feature based installation. So we're going to hit next. And make sure you select the right computer. There's only one to choose from in this case. And we're going to choose that machine. I'm happy. And I'm going to select domain services. And so it's going to actually go ahead and install all of these items here. And that's great. So add those features. And we're going to hit next. And we're okay with the, the current selection here go with the defaults here next and we're okay next and then we can restart the destination automatically if required yes and we're going to install okay so it's finished installing let's hit close and now we've got active directory domain services attached and like well, in, installed on this machine now we need to go ahead and actually promote this machine to be a domain controller so it's going to be the machine that uh, holds all of this critical information that all of the different assets on the network are going to be using so let's go and do that promote to domain controller we're going to create a new forest and in this particular case I'm going to call it red blue labs dot ca and hit next forced functional level yeah we're okay with this even though we're doing a 2022 we're we're okay with this i like this i like this now we're going to type the directory services restore mode so this would it is what it is it's restore mode so give it a password that you're going to remember
and hit next. And this would be the NetBIOS domain name that we have, Red Blue Labs. I like it. Hit next. These would be the, the databases that our Active Directory is being saved in. So now you could change this, and that would be something you could talk about in your home lab. I, for one, am going to keep it as the defaults here. So we do a quick review. Do we like all this stuff? Yes, we do. We're going to hit next. All the prerequisites were met, so I'm going to hit install. And now it's going through and it's actually installing this or promoting this machine to be a domain controller. So the domain controller was successfully promoted, and because I had selected auto restart, it is now going through that process of rebooting this machine. Our machine now has rebooted successfully, and we can see that I have a domain called Red Blue Labs, and I'm going to log on to that domain as the administrator. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my, my password in that I made. Server manager now is opening up and what we're going to see is all of the wonderful services, roles and services that we have installed on this machine. Now I've gone over into the local server and we can see the, the computer name for this server and the domain now that is running here. Perfect. And we can see some more stuff flying in here. We've got Active Directory. We've got our DNS going. This is wonderful. And so we would be then able to connect machines to this domain. But what we need to do is actually go a, a step further and do some configurations of our Active Directory adding users and objects and all that good stuff, which I'm going to show you in the next video. But before you leave, make sure you take a snapshot. DC and AD installed.